Due to its abundant resources, cutting-edge technology, and sizable markets, Africa offers a wealth of business opportunities. Over 136,000 millionaires reside on the continent already, with South Africa, Egypt, and Nigeria leading the pack. Even though young investors and business owners have also been adequately utilizing the opportunities that exist, many of these millionaires are older. According to the IMF's recent World Economic Outlook, six of the world's ten fastest-growing economies are in Africa. Furthermore, by 2050, the continent's economy could quadruple in size and be worth up to $29 trillion Africa's path to economic prosperity, like that of China and India, will produce a slew of big winners and unfortunately, a lot of losers. The big difference is that most of the smart entrepreneurs who are currently making a fortune in Africa have a distinct perspective on the continent. Strangely, while most people are annoyed and frustrated by these issues, the business people who are transforming Africa and making a fortune are fired up and inspired by them. The successful African entrepreneurs use their creativity and innovation to tackle complex issues in a way that generates income, adds jobs, and improves the lives of people because they have a unique perspective on problems. Africa is a market that favors people who can solve problems. Therefore, the potential rewards are higher if you can solve larger problems. As such, our video today looks into the top 30 investment and business opportunities in Africa. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more exciting videos. Recycling waste and scraps is a crucial industry for the future viability of the global economy. Additionally, governments and organizations dedicated to international development strongly support recycling investments in Africa. They offer financial support and incentive programs to encourage recycling investments. Tire recycling is a highly lucrative business concept for African decision makers, particularly as African nations are seeing an increase in the number of cars and trucks. For instance, there are more than 12 million cars in Nigeria alone, and Kenya records a number of over 3 million. With tires having a typical lifespan of about 4 years, the future of this industry looks very lucrative. Investment in waste tire recycling facilities is made possible by government incentives and funding from international development organizations. A program for the collection and recycling of used tires in Africa is run by the Recycling and Economic Development Initiative of South Africa, but other sub-Saharan African nations also offer sustainability grants. In both European and American nations, outsourcing cleaning and security services is a common practice. African cities are also embracing this trend, particularly in Cape Town, Johannesburg, Nairobi, Lagos, Accra, and Dakar. Many businesses prefer to contract with experienced firms to handle their security and janitorial needs. A professional cleaning and security outsourcing business is something African business owners should think about starting. The sophistication of businesses is increasing and mostly internal employees handle key business functions. However, cleaning and security tasks are delegated to qualified businesses. Large African cities are currently experiencing this trend. The cost of labor is reasonable in Africa, and there is little formal training needed for janitorial work. In this region, starting a service business is comparatively simple. The lucrative security and janitorial services industry present opportunities for African entrepreneurs. Investors in large cities may want to think about establishing a reputable outsourcing business. If you ever find yourself wondering about a business venture that will assuredly provide profits and returns after investments, food processing, and packaged food manufacturing stand as a viable option. This business is successful in Africa because it serves as a stopgap to the growing consumer demand for convenient foods, especially in urban areas. Customers who can afford packaged foods are more common in these areas, so investing in this business will undoubtedly pay off. Over the past 50 years, 
processed food consumption in Africa has increased. As more people work outside the home, the opportunity cost of time for women and men has increased, leading them to purchase processed food. In addition, there is a very limited supply of packaged and processed foods on the domestic market, which means that the majority are imported. And in areas where supply exists, market monopoly dominates as there is very little competition. This opens up room for risk-venturing entrepreneurs to invest in the packaged food industry, a fully integrated and operational manufacturing facility that processes raw materials, develops unique recipes for product preparation, and then packages the finished products for distribution and sale would be a formidable investment venture. One of the most significant staple crops in sub-Saharan Africa is corn, which takes up nearly 17% of the estimated arable land there. As a matter of fact, over 300 million people in sub-Saharan Africa rely on corn for food and a living. Paired with wheat, a crop that is vital to global nutrition and is a staple food for an estimated 35% of the world's population, these crops offer an impressive investment venture for agricultural enthusiasts and entrepreneurs in general. Maize and wheat milling is a lucrative business opportunity in sub-Saharan African countries. It is a lucrative business opportunity for many entrepreneurs, with the potential to quickly grow into large commercial mills supplying not only domestically, but also regionally. The reason for success in this venture lies in the fact that its raw materials are abundant and reasonably priced on the continent, particularly as many African nations already cultivate maize and wheat. Furthermore, because it is a staple food for the majority of the continent's inhabitants, its demand is always very high. This demand is expected to increase in tandem with the rapid growth in population, and finally, the relative ease and lack of technique required for mill operation eliminate complicated procedures. Running a mill does not necessitate many complicated procedures, and factory workers can start using reliable machines after some training. Furniture is showing its tenacity as one of the industries that have grown in direct proportion to income growth and as the average income and population of middle-income people are rising, so is the demand for lavish and comfortable. And what other way to show that but to spend on comfy and beautiful furniture? Consumer trends are shifting, and many wealthy people want luxury furniture and decor for their homes and offices. Furniture is in short supply in sub-Saharan African countries, and due to a lack of distributors, the existing items are very expensive. There is a lot of money to be made in this appealing venture. Clothing is a business sector that is highly correlated with the country's economic growth. There is a high demand for clothing and apparel in African countries, but there are not enough branded and reasonably priced clothing companies. African consumers follow fashion and seek higher quality textiles. Although Chinese textiles are inexpensive, they are usually of poor quality. European brands are of high quality, but they are incredibly expensive for the mass market. So with precise planning, clothing customization can be simpler than in other industries, and with a minor cost increase, you can have your products custom branded. You can build your brand with less capital and fewer stocks. Before making an investment in this industry, entrepreneurs should think about the lead times and product quality, whilst frequently updating the stock, because fashion trends change quickly. Also, the factory's proximity to the retail market is crucial, and disruptions to the logistics and supply chain should be avoided. Finally, the investors should adapt their products to the preferences of the market and follow the consumer demands in each African nation. Solar street lighting technology has become extremely efficient as a result of improved solar panels and the energy efficiency of LED bulbs. 
Solar street lights have grown more prominent as a viable solution to traditional street lights in African countries because of their tendency to curtail the exacerbating power outages in several African countries promoted by installing conventional street lights. As the global drive to push for renewables intensifies, governments and international organizations are pouring money into renewables and therefore structure numerous incentives for incorporating renewable technologies into daily life. Lastly, solar street lights do not necessitate infrastructures such as connection to the national grid or routine maintenance and are relatively simple to install and use. This technology is rapidly gaining notoriety on the African continent as many homes, hotels, resorts, and industrial facilities are embracing the solar water heating technology as a means that provides free hot water for a multitude of functions. It is a highly feasible investment venture because in Africa, the average number of sunny days is high, and many countries receive direct sunlight all year and do not experience freezing temperatures. This technology is relatively inexpensive, and as such, it is required by a large number of households and businesses. The installation does not necessitate extensive technical knowledge, hence employees are capable of handling the installation of new units just after a few days of training. In Africa, Water treatment and purification are critical, particularly in several remote villages that lack access to safe drinking water. Generally, a large portion of the population struggle with access to clean water, and as such, the capacity to provide and deliver potable water to households presents highly significant opportunities. In present times, water filtration technologies are numerous, and the equipment varies in size and capacity. Middle-income households in African cities prefer to filter tap water with small home-type water purifiers that are available for sale to African consumers. Regular inspection and maintenance of water treatment systems generate additional revenue. Revenue can be generated, for example, through the initial sale of the system as well as through the contractual maintenance scheme. Water purification services are becoming increasingly popular among African businesses who can form alliances with international companies and serve as their local distributor and service center. Sub-Saharan African countries have a very young population, with a median age of 19.7 years. In Niger and Uganda, the median age is less than 16 years. Africa's young population and extremely high fertility rate provides opportunities for baby care and children's products by increasing the consumer market. Local manufacturing of baby care products is insufficient and many products are imported and sold at exorbitant prices. This opens up opportunities for new local distributors who can develop an efficient method of selling their products. It is an ever-expanding market and African investors and entrepreneurs can either become distributors of a foreign brand or produce their own. Africa's retail sector is constantly upgrading and reshaping, with existing supermarket chains expanding into new markets. Owing to this expansion, the demand for local distributors to stock their shelves soars. This plays favorably into the camps of African distribution companies who benefit profitably as per capita income rises and the population grows. With modern retailing becoming more trendy, middle-income people are shaping their own trends, preferring to shop at grocery stores and supermarkets rather than street vendors, thereby highlighting the need for efficient distribution and supply channels. Furthermore, many foreign brands are considering exporting their products to African countries and, as a result, require strong local distributors to deliver their products to end consumers. For instance, the continent is home to Jumia, which is often regarded as the Amazon of Africa, with a presence in several African countries including Egypt, Ghana, 
Cote d'Ivoire in Nigeria, as well as ShopRite, Nakimat, Woolworths, and Game, all of which offer appealing yearly returns and are expanding rapidly across the continent. Despite the expansion of the African retail market, there is still room for new business owners to thrive, with African countries such as Gabon, Tanzania, Ghana, Namibia, Nigeria, and Rwanda providing lucrative retail business opportunities that could rake in substantial rewards after investing. Without a doubt, education and training are big business in Africa. Why? Because the education system is a bit short-handed in Africa, especially as governments across the continent are overwhelmed by the immense growing demand for quality education. The success of Omega schools in Ghana and Bridge International Academies in Kenya demonstrates that smart entrepreneurs can build profitable businesses by providing quality education to Africans. Small and sizable scale entrepreneurs can provide solutions and services for primary and secondary education, private tutoring, university training, professional certifications, vocational training, corporate sponsored training, personal development, and language training. There is also a strong demand for private tutors to supplement the training children receive in school, in addition to formal primary and secondary school education. More parents are paying additional fees to private tutors who provide extra training after school hours. These after school classes may be held at the children's homes or at a dedicated location where children from the surrounding area come to receive classes. This is producing remarkable results for parents. Students in primary and secondary school who receive extra classes or private tutoring outperform their peers in school and on standardized tests. These are very profitable subfields within the larger umbrella of education that investors and entrepreneurs can venture into while still feeling good about giving back to the community. African markets present excellent opportunities for vendors of cosmetics and makeup items, a market whose future has been predicted to blossom as more and more people are anticipated to be able to afford cosmetic and makeup products due to rising income levels. Additionally, the consumption of makeup products is rising in line with current trends. Cosmetics are quite lucrative because they are easy to sell and are fast moving, and owing to their durable nature they last a long time and don't degrade quickly. They can be stored for several years without deterioration. When it comes to entering the cosmetics industry, African investors have two options. For starters, they could be the sole distributors for well-known foreign brands for a few years and then perhaps develop their own private label cosmetic lines. This option gives more flexibility but has an intensive startup investment. In Africa, consumer electronics, which include household appliances, TVs, smartphones, PCs, and other accessories, are becoming more popular. The continent has a growing demand for all types of electronics, and with many countries switching to 4G networks, the future for digitalization seems very bright. The younger population's adoption of technological and electronic devices, the infrastructure growth of 4G networks and the national electricity grid, as well as the development of more affordable electronic accessories due to more effective and mass production techniques have all increased the profitability of this lucrative business. Agriculture is Africa's most important economic activity. Employing roughly two-thirds of the African continent's working population, agriculture stands out as one of the most important economic activities in Africa. It accounts for 30 to 60 percent of African GDP and approximately 30 percent of the value of exports. Despite this, arable land accounts for only about 6 percent of Africa's total land area. Agriculture has largely been confined to subsistence farming and has been heavily reliant on the inefficient shifting cultivation system. However, Government policies are pushing for modern farming with technological equipment. A 
A dealership for agricultural machinery and equipment can be a very profitable business because as the population grows, so does the demand for agricultural products. And to meet demand, private investors and governments must increase agricultural investment. Furthermore, international aid organizations promote innovative and environmentally friendly agricultural methods. And for that matter, allocate funds to buy modern equipment. Investors in African countries are looking into importing modern agricultural machinery and equipment, and companies that use a dealership can keep stock and sell items on demand in this industry where profit margins and order sizes are high. The African consumer market is expanding rapidly, and with the adoption of digitalization, and the internet, there are numerous opportunities for digital and online sales in Africa. By 2025, it is expected that 600 million people will have access to mobile internet. Internet penetration and smartphone use are increasing in sub-Saharan African countries, which will have an impact on shopping trends, with more people shopping online. Online sales are more profitable than traditional sales. Physical stores are unnecessary for investors. They only require a warehouse, an online sales website, and efficient logistics operations. Investing in online sales and marketing could be a lucrative venture for anyone in the 21st century. Online marketplaces, digital marketing firms, digital advertising, and online sales are all viable investments for entrepreneurs in Africa. Architectural facade cladding, interior design, ceiling coverings, door panels and partition systems, advertising and direction boards, tunnels, display areas, and partition walls are just a few of the applications for aluminum composite panels. Aluminium composite panel has excellent strength and rigidity characteristics. It exhibits strong resistance to UV rays and the outside weather shows acidic and basic strength performance under challenging external environmental conditions and has a wide range of uses because of this. ACP does not require extensive training or knowledge to conduct business. Since the goods are standardized, distributing them to customers is simple. The market for aluminium composite panels offers great potential for African importers and distributors. The panels can be imported and stored in their warehouse. The panels can be sold to the customer after being cut to suit their needs. The main consumers of ACP are advertising agencies, construction firms, and interior designers. These are reasons that make this business venture absolutely lucrative. For water circulation, all modern buildings require polypropylene random copolymer and polyvinyl chloride pipes, and with the construction of modern buildings in Africa, these pipes and fittings are in high demand. PPRC and PVC pipes are widely used in building clean water and wastewater systems. Being a general distributor of pipes and fittings provides African investors with numerous opportunities. Investors can invest in the hardware and building supply industries, with a sizable profit margin, they can distribute their materials to construction projects. Since every product is standardized, very little technical knowledge is needed. The sale of PPLC and PVC pipes would not require more than rudimentary construction knowledge. The concept of biogas and biodiesel facilities has been courted a lot lately as governments and investors in the private sector in Africa carefully examine the opportunities in biofuels. Utilizing biofuels like biodiesel and biogas helps the economy and creates jobs. They can meet the demand of neighboring countries and are a significant source of revenue, especially as Africa benefits from a wealth of natural resources and inexpensive labor. Biofuels are environmentally friendly and can be used in many sectors of the economy, including heating, organic fertilizers, and transportation fuel. When compared to investments in fossil fuels, the cost of processing biodiesel and biogas is not very high. 
The advantages of biofuels can help African business owners because, while investing in the facility, they are eligible to receive government incentives through eco-friendly economic plans. The products biodiesel and biogas are valuable and are simple to market and sell. According to the World Bank, many Africans still conduct their transactions in cash due to a lack of access to formal financial services. Africa's banking, payment, and overall financial services sectors, like those of other developing regions, are among the least developed in the world. Even with its young and educated population, Africa requires improved banking, payment, and other financial services for both commercial and private transactions. The African financial market offers a plethora of investment opportunities for both novice and experienced innovators who could stand to profit handsomely by providing valuable, concise, and simplistic solutions to the continent's payment systems. Tower and mobile cranes are employed in a variety of settings, including factories, ports, and construction sites. Due to their convenience and usefulness, telescopic cranes improve operational efficiency. Booms and cranes can be used in a variety of projects and have lower costs. Hence, it might be a good idea to buy cranes and lease them to project owners. In Africa, crane rental businesses are still uncommon. Nonetheless, their demand is high as a result of ongoing infrastructure projects. For investors, it is a less cutthroat industry that can run all year long. This equipment is rented separately or along with the services of the operator. Concrete for construction projects is produced by stationary and mobile concrete batching plants. Large-scale, long-term projects typically use stationary concrete batching plants. Smaller projects use mobile batching plants, which are also easily moved to different locations. In Africa, importing batching plants and renting them out for domestic projects is a successful business strategy. The construction industry is still not fully mechanized in Africa so projects can benefit from owning concrete batching plants in terms of cost and timeliness. The machinery can be purchased from the project developers for reasonably large sums. Mobile batching plants provide versatility and can be used in a variety of locations and for short-term projects. They will provide good rental income to African investors. Investors could consider becoming a concrete batching plant supplier and rental agency. The developing African construction sector will facilitate these investors in making excellent returns. Construction endeavors are crucial to the economies of African nations. Over the past 10 years, there has been a steady increase in construction activity, particularly in Nigeria, Zambia, Angola, and Namibia. Sub-Saharan Africa, the fastest growing region in the world has the fastest growing construction industry, growing by 6.5% annually. Every infrastructure and construction project uses bricks and paper stones. Africa's construction industry is booming because of urban residential and infrastructure development, and as a result, the market is ideal for selling paver stones and bricks. Africa is currently the second fastest growing mobile phone market after Asia. However, the first wave of Africa's mobile phone revolution has paved the way for a new era in which African consumers are now upgrading from first-generation feature phones to smartphones. The continent's expanding youth population, which is technological and fashion savvy, now represents a multi-billion dollar market for smartphones, which is not surprising. The majority of new age smartphones, like the iPhone and Samsung, are, however, quite pricey for some groups of Africans. Due to this, there is a huge market opportunity for inexpensive smartphones that are currently available in Africa. Even better, most of these smartphones share features with high-end smartphones, 
run the Android operating system, and have similar stylish designs. Several low-cost smartphone brands have made their debuts on the African market in recent years, and given the market potential for these phones, their creators will almost certainly generate millions. Over the coming years, Africa's internet and technology sectors will be fascinating to watch. These hubs have become Africa's Silicon Valley, producing the best tech innovators and entrepreneurs the continent has ever seen. With numerous tech incubators and hubs, Kenya, Ghana, South Africa, and Nigeria are leading the continent. Africans with talent who use innovation to find technological solutions to problems and challenges can become millionaires. Africa now has a 40% increase in internet penetration, with a potential 10% increase in 2022. The internet and technology sector in Africa presents prosperous business opportunities to entrepreneurs and innovators, with a $180 billion future forecast. Africa has the world's largest mining industry, and for that matter, mineral exploration and production are critical to the economies of many African countries. Africa has the third largest mineral reserves of bauxite, cobalt, diamonds, phosphate, platinum, and vermiculite. The continent exports uranium, platinum, nickel, bauxite, and cobalt to the rest of the world. The mining industry relies heavily on its machines and equipment routine maintenance, leads to replacing obsolete parts. This presents an opportunity for an investor who could be a supplier and repairer of mining machinery and equipment. International suppliers and original equipment manufacturers demand exorbitant fees for routine maintenance plans, yet local companies are less expensive and thus can profit handsomely from this market. Africa's media and entertainment industry has evolved into a global and cultural phenomenon that has amassed a large following both within and outside the continent. This can be attributed to the technology that has tailored the industry and accentuated its content, making it more exciting and profitable. As a matter of truth, Nollywood, which is a product of the Nigerian movie industry, for instance, is quickly gaining traction as one of the world's fastest growing film industries, according to MovieWeb. The industry feeds a thirsty market for African love, drama, intrigue, comedy, redemption, action, and other stories. It is not surprising that Africa now has the third largest film industry in the world, after Hollywood and India's Bollywood. Similarly, African music has also gained popularity as a wave of untapped and promising musical talent is sweeping the continent from Nigeria and Ghana, across the continent to Kenya, Tanzania, and down to South Africa. Afrobeats, for instance, are making waves across multiple platforms and globally as well, to a point where African artists are collaborating with global icons and in turn are becoming worldwide names themselves. Africa's entertainment industry will undoubtedly have some exciting years ahead of it. And with a global audience for African music, drama, action, intrigue, and comedy, the media and entertainment can produce the following generation of millionaires. Africa's growing population, combined with a severe lack of available housing, is driving up demand for both commercial and residential real estate. According to the Exchange Africa, the real estate market offers profitable business opportunities and a treasure trove for investors with the means to participate. In Nigeria, for example, over 16 million new houses are required to address the country's severe housing shortage with an estimated cost of construction in the region of $350 billion. Investing in land and estate properties to take advantage of rapidly rising property prices is one of the opportunities in Africa's real estate market. Building offices and affordable housing for sale, rent or lease have lucrative potential. 
Profiting from the real estate market can be achieved through contract flipping, vacation rentals, and home renovation flips. The development of Africa's economies depends heavily on the continent's transportation infrastructure. In Africa, a network of asphalt roads is being constructed. Every African nation is currently working on new road construction projects. Asphalt paving operations require the use of local contractors. Recently, Angola received more than $200 million for the construction of new roads, and in Congo, there is a consideration for the construction of a new bridge over the River Congo. Evidently, there are numerous additional ongoing road construction projects around Africa. There are numerous government bid opportunities for building new asphalt roads. The expansion of Africa's transportation system is also supported by international development agencies and development banks. However, road paving is a challenging industry that requires tools, machinery, highly skilled operators, and bitumen raw material. Nonetheless, it is a very lucrative and never-ending business once this expertise and tools are acquired. The adoption of automobiles and the construction of new industrial factories are driving up energy demand in Africa. Fuel and LPG must be transported to various regions throughout African countries. In Sub-Saharan Africa, investing in fuel tankers and LPG tankers is extremely profitable. There are new gas stations in remote areas and across the country. To transport their products, gas companies require fuel tankers and LPG tankers. There are no pipeline systems for transporting energy resources. The best way to transport them is in fuel and LPG tankers. African business owners can invest in a fleet of fuel and LPG tankers and work in gas, diesel, and LPG distribution. Tankers can be mounted on trucks and conveyed to every region served by the road network. African economies are rapidly developing and their consumer markets are maturing. Africa also provides numerous investment and business opportunities. Identify your target niche and go for it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos.